U.S. power stations are under attack. Federal law enforcement say this could be motivated by anti-LGBTQ hate and white supremacy. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. America's electric grid is under attack. More specifically, its power stations are under attack. Without them, everything from refrigerators to traffic lights would be taken out of commission. That's devastating, because it also means couples would actually have to talk to each other during dinners instead of just watching TV. The latest of these attacks took place in North Carolina. Traffic lights are out. Generators are on and people in Moore County, North Carolina, feel challenged by crisis. It's devastating. Authorities say someone with a gun broke through a gate and intentionally opened fire at two power substations in Moore County. Roughly 35,000 customers are without power and will be for most of the week until crews repair and replace equipment. With temperatures dropping, this isn't good news. Things there are getting icier than a couple talking to each other during dinner instead of watching TV. Turns out they have nothing in common other than kind of enjoying reruns of Futurama. But when something like this happens, it has wide-ranging consequences. Local water and sewer services were only working because of backup generators. People were also told to stay off the roads because there were no working traffic lights. The county also closed schools for several days and declared a state of emergency, including a curfew. They closed school. Huh. I think I know who did this. As of this recording, no one has been arrested. No cameras, apparently. There were bullets and brass shell casings left behind, but any fingerprints on the casings were burned away. Meaning the bullets being fired burned away the fingerprints, not that the perpetrator burned their own fingerprints off their hands, like an amazing criminal or a horrible chef. This isn't the first time North Carolina's power grid was at risk. On November 11th, Sheriff's deputies in Jones County, North Carolina, reported that criminal vandalism had caused 12,000 people to lose power for days. Although we don't know the motive behind these attacks, the more recent attack has gotten the attention of federal law enforcement. What happened here Saturday night was a criminal attack, and federal, state, and local law enforcement are actively working to bring those responsible to justice. Now, the Department of Homeland Security, FBI, and ATF joining local authorities in the hunt for who is behind this critical infrastructure attack. The FBI is seeking cell phone records to see who was near the substations during the attack. The FBI is trying to get people cell phone records? It's shocking that they have to try and don't just have immediate access to them. Guess we're not living in 1984, just 1983. North Carolina isn't the only state that authorities are looking into. Similar attacks have threatened infrastructure nationwide. According to a memo obtained by News Nation, at least six substations in Oregon and Washington state were attacked in November. Power companies in Oregon and Washington have reported physical attacks on substations using hand tools, arson, firearms, and metal chains. In recent attacks, criminal actors bypassed security by cutting the fence links, lighting nearby fires, shooting equipment from a distance, or throwing objects over the fence and onto equipment. And since this was Oregon and Washington, I assume crystals were also involved. This one's for healing, and this one's for criminal vandalism. The memo also suggests that those who attacked the substations had insider knowledge to target critical equipment. In September, Florida also experienced at least six intrusions at its power stations. What possible motives are there for these power station attacks? I'll get to that right after the break. Welcome back. Power stations in North Carolina, Seattle, Washington State, and Florida have been attacked in recent months. This year, threats against the U.S. power grid are at an all-time high. Data from the Department of Energy show there have been at least 900 physical attacks on the U.S. power grid since 2010. 107 of those happened this year. Authorities haven't caught any of the perpetrators, but they believe they have a motive for at least some of the attacks. Anti-LGBTQ bigotry and white supremacy. 
How did they come to that conclusion? I mean, if they hate people that are represented by rainbows, wouldn't it make more sense to attack solar power stations since you can't have rainbows without sunlight? Eh, I guess science isn't a bigot's strong suit. Well, for the anti-LGBTQ theory, there's been no real evidence. But investigators point to the timing of the North Carolina shootings, which coincided with the time a drag performance began. Coincidence? Probably. Drag performances are pretty popular. By this logic, that'd be like saying maybe they wanted to shut down power to keep people from watching the World Cup. Which makes sense, since this is America. We hate soccer. Because we're against anything that takes away the right to use our arms. Now, I'm not saying this definitely wasn't the motive behind the attack. What I am saying is there hasn't been any publicly released evidence other than an anonymous source saying investigators are looking into the timing of the drag show. But true or not, many are already treating the attack on the power grid as an attack on the LGBTQ community. We've seen this escalation. Kendra Johnson is executive director of Equality North Carolina. The organization releasing a statement stating regardless of the motivation behind the power grid attack, the nation has a problem with domestic terrorism. Our community is under attack and we need to have deeper investigation on the intimidation that's happening to an already marginalized community. People also suggest that these attacks could be motivated by white supremacists, which again makes no sense to me. Because if you're a white supremacist, then why are you trying to make everything black? Okay, there is way more evidence for the white supremacist theory. For example, it's partly based on earlier federal warnings about how domestic extremists are targeting the power grid. The FBI claims that racially motivated extremists want to attack power grids to create civil disorder and inspire further violence. Which, I guess, makes sense. Nothing makes me want to be more violent than when my Wi-Fi goes out. Although the domestic terrorists I blame for that are Spectrum. The idea of white supremacists plotting to attack the electric grid isn't new. According to the U.S. government, attacking power grids has been the subject of extremist chatter for years, especially during 2020. Last year, four men were charged for plotting to attack power grids in Idaho and other parts of the Northwest with homemade thermite and rifles. They made it themselves? I didn't know Pin Interest had a section for DI white supremacy. How did the authorities catch these guys? Well, among other things, they made a video montage of themselves. In the video, the participants are seen firing short barrel rifles and other assault type rifles. And the end of the propaganda video shows the four participants outfitted in Ottomwaffen masks giving the Hail Hitler sign beneath the image of a black sun, a Nazi symbol. Not the sharpest white supremacists in the shed. And earlier this year, Three other men pleaded guilty to conspiring to provide material support to attack U.S. power grids. Apparently, they hoped that attacking the power grid could cause a race war and induce the next Great Depression. So basically, their plans were about as well thought out as the underpants gnomes. Investigators are already looking online for more users who called for attacks against critical infrastructure and those who share public data on U.S. substations. A Department of Homeland Security intelligence memo obtained exclusively by News Nation says an anonymous forum user called for attacks against critical infrastructure, including substations in six states, Arizona, California, Maryland, Nevada, Tennessee, and Wisconsin, just about a month before a similar attack, which cut power to tens of thousands in North Carolina. The memo reads, quote, in a thread about a civil war, source claimed, quote, it's not going to happen until people target these places and provided a list of targets, including the, quote, strategic national stockpile, strategic petroleum reserve and all power plants over a certain capacity. Again, they think civil wars start when the power cuts out for a few days. I guess history and science aren't their strong suits. Hmm. I'm starting to suspect whoever did this didn't enjoy school that much, hmm? But while there's a pattern of white supremacists targeting the U.S. power grid, there's still no proof yet of what really motivated the most recent attacks. But the recent attacks remind us of just how vulnerable the U.S. electric grid is. With more than 470,000 miles of circuits and more than 79,000 substations, it's hard to maintain security across all of them, especially those that are in the countryside. 
Power companies prefer to save costs rather than invest more in security. Power companies like Duke Energy, which was attacked in North Carolina and Florida, have been lax with security for years. Some simply rely on chain-linked fence and locks without security cameras or guards. Even when power companies do pay attention to security, the type of security that they're more focused on is against the weather, not bullets. They need to get their act together. Otherwise, these attacks will keep happening, cutting power to crumbling infrastructure, namely television, the foundation on which so many relationships are built. So what do you think about the attacks on the U.S. energy grid? Leave your comments below. And if you like this show, remember that we rely mainly on direct support from viewers like you. All it takes is as little as a dollar per episode over on our crowdfunding website, Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered for more. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.